Hey there, I'm David Ferris with E&E &E News and the Electric Road Trip. And I'm David Iaconangelo, also from E&E &E News. When we left you last week, we were with Pete Baer, our colleague, who reported from Montana and most of Washington State. And then I picked up, um, got a Chevy Bolt, and uh, drove it all the way down the coast from Seattle down to the Bay Area. And the first stop in Seattle, um, I explored Seattle's curbside charging program where they attempted to build chargers on the curb for people who don't have garages in an attempt to create, make it easier for people to own EVs in big, dense cities. And the really interesting thing I learned is that they failed. They found it was actually really hard to build chargers on the curb because of a lot of, of uh, bureaucratic reasons. Portland is the smallest big city on the West Coast, uh, but it's made a name for itself as a um, as a policy hub for electric vehicles because it's done a lot of bold things that other cities haven't even tried. Um, then I made my way down um, the coast, you know, going through the redwoods in my quiet car. It was a very pleasant experience. <laughs> um, down to uh, San Francisco, where I picked you up. Right. So uh, on uh, our first day in the Bay Area, we went to the Tesla factory in Fremont. Uh, we saw a lot of robots there, really impressive robots. We also saw a lot of human workers. Uh, that made us think a little bit about uh, really whether the company, despite its sustainability mission, uh, will be able to avoid some of the conflicts with labor that uh, other major automakers have, have encountered. So uh, then we made our way uh, to the Central Valley and uh, you had a really interesting visit in, in Davis, didn't you? Yeah, I went to UC Davis's uh, plug-in hybrid and EV uh, center. It's a research institute that gets frequently get taps, uh, gets tapped by uh, California's legislators and regulators to do policy work for them. Um, and so one thing I learned there that was uh, that struck me uh, was that uh, California, despite its uh, you know, it's million and one policies uh, designed to promote EV adoption. Um, most of the public doesn't really know much about EVs. And the experts there don't think that the state is going to be able to hit its EV sales goal of uh, 5 million by 2030 if it doesn't do uh, a lot better job of reaching people, reaching a, a wider swath of the public and letting them know about what EVs are all about. Then we went on to Sacramento, which is the capital of California. And we visited a very little known government agency called the Department of Measurement Standards. Uh, they measure things for the state, including gasoline. So when you go to a gas station, they're the ones who create the standards that determine that you get every drop of that gallon of gas that you buy. And what we learned was there's no similar system in place for electric vehicle charging stations. There's no one ensuring that you got the number of electrons that you said that that the charging station says you got they're creating the first standards for that in the country and they're getting a lot of pushback from industry about that we've had a really interesting day haven't we we have yeah yeah, yeah we started the day in uh in huron which is a little farm town in uh, the central valley uh there was a program there uh, called uh, green Raiteros, uh which is an electric car share program that serves um mainly uh, low-income people in a rural area, a lot of farm workers actually. And so what's interesting about that to us is, uh, you know, EVs are generally not associated with poor people um, or with rural areas. And uh, this program helps uh, bring people to their medical appointments mostly. And so they bring together various kinds of, of justice, environmental justice and health justice and even economic justice. Yeah, Ray, the leader of this group, is a real, it's a big personality. Oh yeah. And he has a vision for um, rural electric car share across the state, um, which we found to be an intriguing, intriguing option. Um, and right now we're talking to you from uh, the Tesla supercharging station in Kettleman City, California, which is one of the largest supercharging stations that Tesla has. It's also the only one that has a lounge where people can hang out while they're charging. And so uh, we went inside. What kind of amenities did we see? Oh, yeah, you can you hang out and you can uh, use their Wi-Fi and they have a barista there so you can get yourself a cappuccino while you wait to charge up. Yeah. Uh, and one thing that we, one reason we visited here is because we, we were posing the question, is this the new gas station? The fact that you need to dwell longer at a charging station than you do at a gas station. Does that mean that the um, experience of being in a salon will 
create a different pace of travel or will bring people together in a different way. So now we're on to Los Angeles. We've got another fascinating week of visits to do um, to explore different aspects of the electric vehicle ecosystem. So keep it here. Uh, we'll be doing our final video blog next week. And thanks a lot for watching.